So number three says this, uh, you may have seen these hazardous symbol warning symbols in the science lab. Which symbols have line symmetry and how many lines of symmetry? So let's take a look at each one closely. Uh, this one here, does A have line symmetry? Yes or no? What do you think? Yes. Yes. Okay, I hear some yes, some no. If you draw a line, appearably, right through the middle here, and if that were to be a straight line right through the middle, you could see that there would be a line of symmetry right there. So yes. Does it have another one? Like, what about this one? No. no, why not? Because this part and this part are not mirror images of each other. They're not the same. <coughs> so just, uh, just the one. Just the one. Let's see. Just that one. Good. All right, what about B? No. no. Mm, it's close, isn't it? Uh, from about here down, looks pretty good. But then these flames, you see, this line would go right up between this, these flames. And of course, this does not have a match partner over here. Uh, this part does not have a match partner over there. So they are not e exactly symmetrical. So this one would be no. So yes, one right there, no. Awesome. OK, what about C? Yeah, it does look like there's a line of symmetry. And would you agree that it would be right down the middle here, right? Splitting the skull right in half there. If I could draw a straight line with this tablet here, it's a little tough to gauge exactly. OK, any more? What about this one? No, for sure not. There's a big skull over there, and there's not a big skull over here, right? So that definitely doesn't work. OK, all right, what about this one? Sure, the Tesla sign there, right? <laughs> well, does that look like a Tesla sign? I don't know. That's kind of more in the news than, was this toxic? I think, toxic substance. So that's, does that look good? What about, thi what about this one? For sure not, right? There's no, there's no circle part over here. There's, you know, the T is, no, no, that's not good. OK, so just one. So yes, one, yes, one. Ooh, biohazard. What about this one right here? I see one down the middle, right here. I think that's the only one, right? No. 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 What about over here? You think this one is one? Yes. Yeah, you're absolutely right. What about this one? Yes. Okay, I heard someone say triangle. Yeah, it does look like, in a sense, it does look like a triangle. If you connect this part with this part with this part, it's like a equilateral triangle. So three sides, you might expect three, three lines of symmetry. Yeah, I kind of like it. Uh, anything more, though? Or is that it? Very good. Yes, three lines of symmetry. And then we got another flame going on here. So this flame definitely has left-handed and right-hand differences there. So there's nothing here, I would say. You agree with that? Awesome. All right, that's your, that's your number three. Sam, a question? Uh, yes. But uh, number four, it, this is a, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of what a tessellation is called. Do you know what a tessellation is? Did you talk about tessellations last year? So a tessellation would be uh, basically like uh, a tiling of a surface or it's a collection of geometric shapes that fully covers a surface. So all the edges connect, there's no gaps or spaces. And tessellations are often like made by identical geometric shapes. So these would be called tessellations. And uh, there's lines of symmetry in these tessellations, isn't there? No. Yeah, for this one, there seems to be more than one. I would say that this would be one. Would you say there's another one? Yeah. yeah. Maybe this way? Yeah, and maybe this way? No. Okay, are there any more? No. Through the corners here? No, there, there, this doesn't work, no. So this one would... Uh, uh, yeah, it looks like it has one, two, and three. That's interesting. What about this one in B? Would there be one there? Right down the middle. Yeah, right down the middle, vertically. I would say that's probably a good idea, that, that one right here. And again, with the ruler, you, it would be exact. Would there be any one on an angle over here, perhaps? <coughs> Let's see. Would, would this one work? Yeah. yeah, I think that would actually work, wouldn't it? Yeah, kind of turn your head sideways. Um, what about this one? Does that one work? Yeah. yeah, it should. Now, do you see, I don't know, it, they're, they're different shapes, but do you see something that's similar to this shape over here? Because they have the same sort of lines of symmetry. I, it's kind of weird. 
I guess I don't. But look, at, another thing that's kind of cool about tessellations is that the same pattern kind of in each quadrant, like if, if this was like a quadrant or a uh, section, that same pattern exists over here as well, exactly. Right? That's exactly the same. And then this. So those would be exactly the same. Interesting. So in that sense, it's kind of like a triangle, I guess. Right? From this section over to here, down to here, up to there. So three lines of symmetry, that's kind of triangular as well, I'd say. Cool. That was easy. That was easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now you're supposed to give me a, sim a sign, remember? All right. Oh, the buzzer. That, 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 that's a good one, too. But yeah, I should, I should hit that easy button more often. It's easy. OK. So you guys are working on number five right now, right, with your graph paper there. So remember the rules of lines of symmetry. Each corresponding point has to have a matching point on the exact opposite side of the line. And the imaginary line between the two corresponding points must form a 90 degree angle with the line of symmetry. So if we were to take a look at this one, I don't have the full coordinate plane here, but if I just plopped this down, if this is the line of symmetry right here, then P, uh, the reflection of P, would have to be one, two, three units, one, two, three units on the other side of the line of symmetry. And the imaginary line that would connect them, like this, would have to make a 90 degree angle at the line of symmetry. So that's how we know. Now S is right on the line of symmetry, so S is, this doesn't move at all. And this line that's right on the line of symmetry doesn't move at all. One, two, three, one, two, three. There's Q. And remember, the reflections are usually, they usually have like a prime symbol, like that. And then you connect these. So that's what that would look like for the start number six there. A ruler? Here you go. So, yeah, so S prime would be the same point, S prime. And R prime would be the same point, R prime. So how do you label them? Just put them near the point uh, as well, yeah, best you can. So it does say uh, label the coordinates as well. So that means we'll have to label the uh, actual points. So let's see. Um, P prime would be what for a coordinate? Well, we always start at 0, 0, don't we? Whoops, which is right here, 0, 0. So we go over 1 and down 2. So 1, negative 2 is the coordinate for P prime. Q prime is going to be over 5 units and down 1, 2, looks like. 5, negative 2. That's what this, this point is. PQR, R prime, is 5, 1. And S prime would be 2, 1. OK, so always start at 0, 0. Go left, right first. This is the x coordinate is the left, right. So we're going right for all of these, right? We're going to go right for all of these points. So that's why these are all positive. For the p and the q, we go, we go down for the y coordinate for p and q. That's why the y coordinates are negative, negative. and we actually go down the same amount for e to get to each point from the from the zero line. And then if we go up from the line, then, then that's a positive value. Remember? Okay, grade nines, I've also had some questions about number seven. So number seven, some of you started on number seven, for those of you that may be wondering. Uh, and those of you, if you're not at number seven yet, maybe you want to pause on what you're doing just to hear this uh, so that when you get to it, you have a better understanding. Number seven says, draw a triangle on a grid. So a grid is obviously just a uh, piece of graph paper. You always should write your x and y axes somewhere on the graph paper so you have a frame of reference. You are going to have to label and identify the coordinates of the vertices of these shapes. So you will have to have the x and y axes on there. So if I draw a triangle like this, 
Okay, let's say, and actually I, I'm going to put it more in the middle. So let me just let me just rearrange this. I'm going to put this more in the middle, and I'm going to label these vertices A, B, and C. Let's say. Okay. So the question says, choose one side of the triangle as a line of reflection. So we've done that in these questions in number five as well, and then draw the reflection image. So I'm going to choose maybe A, B this time. Uh, and I say this time because we're, uh, I think later in the question it's going to ask you to do it over and over again. So if we draw the reflection image here, then this is my mirror line. And C is the one that has to go on the other side of the line. Now it's a little tough to actually measure how many uh, units away C is, isn't it? It's a little tough because you, you're not counting exactly squares, but it goes through one, you know, two, three squares. So one, two, three squares and hits um, an intersection of the grid here. So that looks like it's going to be where C prime is going to be. Obviously B prime and A prime are going to be the exact same points because they are on the reflection line. So that's what I get for my first one and in labeling the, the points I'm going to label A, I'm going to label B, and I'm going to label C. I'm also going to label A prime, B prime, and C prime. Okay. So for me A is negative 1, negative 1. And for me B is 0, 1. 0 left, right, 1 up. And C is 1, 2, 3, negative 1. A prime is going to be the same as A. B prime is going to be the same as B. And C prime is going to be negative 1, 2, 3, positive 1, 2, 3. Okay, so that's, that's the first part of 7. They're asking you to draw an original triangle somewhere on a grid and then use one of the sides as the reflection line, draw the other one, label the vertices of both. Okay, write the coordinates of each vertex. And then finally, how many lines of symmetry does the shape have? Okay. Now this shape, what does it mean by shape here? Does it mean by the, the combination of the two, do you think? It didn't say triangle, it said shape. So I'm, I'm wondering if, I think it means this whole thing that I've drawn here now. This whole, this whole thing. So how many lines of symmetry does this whole thing have? Well, I know it has one, this side that we reflected things on. Does it have another one? Uh, I don't think so. Not my, not my triangle. Maybe your triangle you draw would have more, but mine has one. Okay, so you would write down one line of symmetry. Okay. And I'll let you do the rest of the question on your own. It says, repeat part B for the other two sides of the triangle. And do you always get the same shape? Oh, yeah, that's the same. oh is it, is the assignment just say A and B? Oh, that's too bad. Okay. Um, all right, for, for an extension, I would encourage you to do the rest of uh, seven. Um, yeah, but if, it, if the assignment just says A and B for now, that's fine. But you can repeat uh, for the other sides and, and take a look at the shapes you get and answer those questions as well. All right, so that's, that's the base minimum for, for seven there. Any other questions about seven? Okay, this is what uh, this is what number nine should look like here. Uh, the coordinates of the shape. Yes, it is. Yep. How many lines of symmetry does it have? Uh, I'll leave that up for you guys to decide. But that's a, get a bit of a kickstart on number nine. I didn't say that.